What's up, people? Welcome back. Thanks again for joining me as always. Today, we're going to be talking about two different lighting setups for interviews. Now, the first setup is through a softbox, and the second one is through something called a book light. So in regards to the book light, by no means am I here to tell you how to do it properly or effectively or perfect, because to be honest, I, I don't know how to do it too well. This is something I'm still kind of new at. This is a new technique that I'm still practicing and learning. And you'll see throughout this video, especially in the behind the scenes, there were a few things that I was really trying to work on and trying to get the kinks out of. Um, there were things I probably could have done better. So again, I'm not here to explain how to do it properly. This is just me going through the process of trials and errors and learning and kind of comparing the two different lighting setups between the softbox and book lighting. All right, guys, right now we're in the process of setting everything up. We still have a little bit to go. Um, basically, once Carlo finishes up everything and we're ready to start the first interview, um, I'm going to show you guys a little behind the scenes of what everything looks like. So here we go. It is real bright, but it's like soft. It's not like crazy harsh, but I still don't want to look at it. <laughs> it's like one of those things. So I went over to my buddy Tomas's house and we created this little interview setup just before we get into the key light aspect, which is the main priority of this video. A few different aspects I want to go over that kind of stayed the same throughout the interview process, regardless of the different key light setups was on the right side of frame, I had that big V flat neg board. So essentially, like last video, I like that moodier look. So instead of using a bounce, I used a neg to kind of create more shadows. Uh, right behind that, I had my bicolor quasar tube set to 5500 Kelvin to kind of match the daylight from the windows. I had that really high up to kind of give a little bit of a hair light back there. So something cool I want to mention is if you look at the window in frame, you'll notice that has a slight blue tint to it. Now this wasn't natural, this wasn't from the windows or anything natural like that. What I did was I had two blue fabric shears that I bought off of Amazon and I hung those up behind the curtains or the drapes or the whatever, the, whatever you call those things. I hung the blue shears up behind those just to give the window a little bit of a blue tint and a blue hue. I thought that complemented well with the warmth of the lamp and the warmth from the stairwell. The last thing I want to mention is the stairwell back there. Now, a few months ago, I would have looked at that stairwell and said, I have no idea what I want. I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Just add the key light, the hair light, call it a day. Now, I really wanted to spice up the interview look and kind of create a, some depth to the image. This is what we finally got. <sighs> Happy accidents. That's really it. I was actually, I was actually falling off the chair, trying to tape it to the ceiling. And we got this kind of contraption going. So the two lights that I use for the stairwell were the mini Nanlite Pavlo tube and the Aperture MC. Both of those were set to a very orangey tint, saturation and intensity up to 100 because I needed to get the most amount of brightness out of that image. And looking at the screen and looking at the colors from the stairwell, I really love the way that this turned out because without it, it would have been just dark hole, boring in the background, but Adding that orange and the warmth in the, in the uh, background just created depth and uh, a little bit of interest that normally, a few months ago, I probably wouldn't have thought of, but through practice and looking at references and inspirations, I, I noticed that some of the top cinematographers are always looking to create depth in their image. So that was something that I, I really wanted to try for this particular scene. All right, so now let's talk about the main subject, the key light. So the main light that I used was the Nanlite Forza 300. Now this light is an absolute beast. I paired that with the Parabolic Softbox. This was the first setup that I have. And normally for any interview that I do, I use this softbox method. And for a lot of shoots that I've been on, it typically is something similar. A lot of people use softboxes nowadays. So when keying Tomas in this scene, as you guys know, again, I like that moodier look. So instead of bringing the light more around the front side of his face. I brought it more around the side to kind of just key a little bit more of the side face and give him a little bit of that Rembrandt triangle here and just create a little bit more mood on the other side. Now that's something that I typically like to do because I just like that moodier image. And since this softbox is the Parabolic 120, I believe it is massive. So it creates a really giant soft source. And going back to the video previously last week, I believe, the key to softness and the key to a beautiful beauty soft light is a big, broad, soft source. So having this softbox is great for that 
type of look. So something I wanna know is when you shine a light directly onto a subject with a softbox, yes, this light is super soft, it's beautiful, but there, there's this element, there's this kind of sheen, there's this highlight that, that it gives because it is such a direct source, regardless of how soft the softbox is and how big it is. So after the key light was set up, I framed everything, recorded a little bit, two different angles, one wide and one tight. Uh, I'm really happy with the way this looks. If I were doing this as an actual interview, I would be more than happy with the way that this image looks. Now, a negative aspect of using this particular softbox is if you were in a really tight space doing an interview, this light might not be the best option for you because the softbox is massive. For example, in this room right here in my basement, when I started YouTube, I had this huge softbox and it would hit the ceiling, it would hit all the... It was such a pain because of how big it was. Using a Parabox softbox the size of this might be better served in a bigger space than it is in a smaller space. So after I shot those first two clips, changed the lighting setup, and now I was attempting to do a book light. Now this isn't something that I do very often, especially in interviews, but I wanted to test it out and see how it looked compared to the softbox. So what is a book light? A book light is a bounce source of light that is diffused with another layer of diffusion. The light is placed 45 degrees to the reflector or the bounce, and the diffusion layer can be joined at the end of your bounce. So the fabric that I used as a bounce was unbleached muslin. Now you could use any sort of bounce, a beadboard, any, anything you would like. For this one in particular, I wanted to try using unbleached muslin, and I ran that through a sheet of silk, and that was directed right onto my subject. Now, this is ultra soft light because there is no direct light at all. The light is facing away from the subject, hitting the fabric, and that bounced light is already being softened because it's not direct, and running that through an extra sheet of diffusion softens it even more. So a problem that I ran into that I didn't really think about when I was setting up the composition for the interview was, when I was setting up the book light and I had everything set up, the light was soft, it looked great in the book light, I was, I was happy with the way it looked, but in the background you'll see that there was this massive hard shadow that was creating from this be this beam of wood from the stairwell. So it took me about 45 minutes of adjusting and playing around to kind of create a softer shadow there so it wasn't as harsh. There was parts of me that was just like, ah, screw it, just, you know, just deal with it. But there's also part of me that was like, no, I kind of have to figure this out. I kind of have to see if I can figure this out. And um, after about 45 minutes of toying around with this book light, adjusting the bounce, adjusting the placement of the key, of the light, the height, everything. I finally came out with a solution and the light was, and the shadow was a little bit softer. So I was really happy with the way this looked. So in review, would I use this book light method on a job or in an interview setup right now? My answer is no. The reason why is because I'm not confident in my abilities in this book light yet, because I haven't practiced enough, I haven't gotten all the tweaks and the every, I need to make sure that I can set this up properly, efficiently, without any hiccups, because when you're on set, when you're at a job, you need to be able to set things up quickly, efficiently, and know what you're doing. So I need to practice a lot more. And right now on a job during an interview, the softbox attachment is my go-to lighting setup. All right, so let's take a look at these two different lighting setups side by side. My personal favorite is honestly the book light. I love the way that this looks. I think it is beautiful and I think it's so soft compared to the softbox. Now, I'm not saying that the softbox is hard or not soft at all. I think it is beautiful as well and super soft, but it, it also adds that little bit of sheen that I was talking about. As the book light, it wraps a little bit more. Also using the unbleached muslin, it adds a little bit of warmth to the image as well. So I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys. Which lighting setup did you like better? Have you ever used a book light before? Are you more of a softbox guy? I'd also love some tips and tricks as far as creating a better book light setup. So hopefully you guys understand my perspectives. You're not Roger Deakins. I'm not Roger Deakins. There's no reason for us to stop practicing and honing our craft and becoming better, learning new techniques and trying things that might scare us or things that we've never done before. So thank you as always for sticking around if you made it this far. Please again, comment below, provide some tips for me, provide, provide some feedback, some comments. I wanna hear it all. So thank you so much as always until next time, peace.